Okay. Right. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to a re-recording of episode one <laughs> of Free Flow. Um, Free Flow is a brand new flow. A brand new free flow. Brand flowing. New flow, going with the flow. Um, all about um, menstrual cycles and uh, moon cycles, um, all things period, um, and also looking at this through, for me, the lens of ADHD, um, and also someone who has PMDD, um, and I'm also working with my amazing cousin as well. Um, and we are, um, we've done, we've probably, I think we've, we've kind of technically done this twice now because we, um, I think we started a recording, it didn't save on the original on the original time and then I um and then we managed to get one on Instagram which did save um mm. on Instagram but not off of Instagram <laughs> so look, <laughs> it's a higgledy piggledy start so we're doing it on zoom and we will be doing lives and uh if you uh, if you take a little peek at my Instagram um you'll be able to see you know as we kind of move through these um and yeah, we're just really excited to be here today. I think we're both, I'm going to say, I'm going to be honest to say we're both a little bit sleepy today where we're at kind of in our cycle <laughs> or for having a bit of a late night, um, but we're excited to be here and um, it's very much like a kind of in the experimental phase really um, of doing this, doing this work. Mm -hmm. So if you're seeing this on um, as a clip on Instagram, you can join my mailing list, which is on um, the link in my bio. If you're seeing a clip of this on any social media or YouTube, um, there'll be links uh, somewhere in the comments or descriptions for you to kind of come onto the, the mailing list and you'll get the full episodes then um, rather than sort of little little nuggets. Um, yeah, yeah, so my name's Saoirse, um, Saoirse Rattigan, and um, I am at the moment doing my um, menstrual leadership certification and I am, yeah, just a massive advocate of really learning about your cycles and really exploring that in terms of cycle syncing. So exploring the energy that you feel throughout the cycle um, and kind of working with it rather than against it after headbutting against mine for a long time. And then also receiving a, a diagnosis for ADHD last year at 31 um, and also PMDD, which if you don't know much about, we'll be covering in our inner autumn um, episode, which will be episode four. Um, and we'll kind of be diving into that a little bit. Um, yeah. So I've got Julia, who's my cousin. Um, Julia, do you want to say a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I am Saoirse's cousin. This is true. Um, <laughs> and uh, I have been uh, charting my cycle for about two and a half years and or maybe a bit more maybe nearly three years and using natural cycles um, which I know source you there's an acronym yeah FAM, FAM um, fertility, fertility awareness method yes so yeah. I've been doing that for about two and a half years um to not get pregnant um although you can use it to also get pregnant mm -hmm. um uh so yes so I just recently got very so that was it sort of start of my 30s got very interested in my cycle and just knowing more and even if you don't have a partner and you're not sexually active I would urge you to chart or yeah find more out about your cycles because it's just really empowering mm. um even if you're not doing it to not get pregnant or to get pregnant like it's just really empowering to know more about what's happening in your body mm. so and it's great to uh, me and sort of good, had um, conversations yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just off the back of that julia it's, it's such a great reminder that i think for me and um, probably for a lot of people we kind of come at uh cycles and menstrual cycle awareness just with the lens of fertility and we kind of forget that like we are so much more than vessels that carry humans which is incredible in itself and we all you know are we all here because of that but it's um it's really I love that you kind of just reminded me to sort of say that um yeah it's so much more than just the fertility side of things um and I've perhaps that's the lens as well of like Julia kind of coming coming to this through um FAM fertility awareness method and me kind of coming through it through MCA so um menstrual I forgot what it was there menstrual cycle awareness um and kind of how you know I've come through it through kind of a different a slightly different route 
um but it's still you know all of it is still relevant it's all kind of nice holistic picture um and yeah and the studio yeah. was before I leaked in is that you know we've had some really interesting conversations and um actually earlier this year 2022 I, I went to Cornwall for a family holiday with lots of ratigans and lots of madness and um Julie was just asking me some really interesting questions about everything in in one of the car journeys and I was like oh I'm giving some really good answers actually because I've been studying this for like I don't know about four years now and and just you know exploring and and I was like oh I just kind of I wish I wish I could you know just say this as a voice note and then I got home and I thought oh I just need to ask Julia if she minds hopping on a zoom or doing some lives and having these conversations because they are a free flow you know yeah. we have like a little outline and some plans but we really want to keep that conversation uh kind of going and and anyone is really welcome to kind of join in that so if you do have questions or if you have um you know other areas that we can dive into or requests then that would be amazing and share your knowledge as well you know we're all kind of we're mm -hmm. you know we're, we're really learning so much and we've we've learned a lot for our own bodies and experience but there's just mm -hmm. so much it's just a vast area and it's fascinating so um yeah, also, we, mm. there's a lot of um power in sharing uh like as people who menstruate sharing what our men's what well, I was gonna say what our menstruation is like, but also our non-menstruation, like just mm. what our cycle is like, because that's a lot. A big part of the issue is it doesn't get talked about. We don't talk about it. Yeah. Um, except maybe with our mother or or main carer who taught us, you know, what to do when you're on your period. But yeah, um, there's a lot of power in having these discussions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that community feel, and yeah, when people come together and talk about this, it's yeah breaking breaking to some taboos you know we've got to be able to talk about this now <laughs> about time so yeah, yeah I love that um and I guess off the back of that um mm. but I suppose we should also just say neither of us are doctors I just want to say that now like we're not doctors um, <laughs> at all not <laughs> really at all. have come at this from yeah the menstrual cycle awareness which kind of I, I came through of um doing yoga meditation and meetings people going to women's circles um, and having um, more experiences kind of come through that way and that was my introduction to it all and and for me as well it was really like the missing puzzle piece for me to get my ADHD diagnosis so by charting by being aware of my cycles seeing these kind of similar patterns each month um, I, I was able to get my um, my ADHD diagnosis and I actually just got a recorded with a podcast with a lady uh, and I'll, maybe I'll link it somewhere in, in the notes of one of these uh, if I'm organised enough. Um, and it was called, um, is it ADHD? Wow. Oh, I should really remember the name. That's awful, isn't it? Fabulously ADHD. Is it fan Fabulously ADHD? I will link it because that's a terrible, uh, that's a terrible way of me introducing a podcast. <laughs> she asked me a couple of questions about how I got started with it all and um and I thought oh that's a really great you know uh, exploration but you can see more about you know kind of my story and on you know various platforms and as I kind of um have been opening up about that a lot more now as well um and you know all the pieces to it but it's so fascinating and, and also I just wanted to say as well like a little shout out to um Alexandra and Sharna for their work which is Red School um you should really check it out if you're interested in you know all things cycles and and they've also just got a, a new book coming out um that's all about menopause so their book is called Wild Power and it's incredible I recommend it to everyone um and their new book uh about menopause is called Wise Power which I love um because it's really that delicious wiseness so um that is fascinating it's I think it's out on like a, a pre-sale thing at the moment so those those women are really I think a lot of people that I you know follow or learn from on other platforms have had their training with um, Alexandra and Shane and um, they really give us this language as well for um, maps and also um, like the seasons so we'll go into the maps another time because I know that's there's just so much information but the inner seasons is something that I think it was Alexandra specifically that kind of came up with but definitely through writing their book and they really kind of gave us this um vocabulary to talk about the different phases mm. of our cycle. so we are starting off with um in a winter um we've actually already recorded um in a spring because there was a bit of a yeah back and forth of our recordings so uh that will be coming out soon as well but We've got episode one is in a winter, which is really your, um, you know, your first day of your full, full flow. Um, and 
and uh, there's different yeah different kind of parts of the of the seasons of the cycle and they all kind of have their they have their shadows and they have their wonderful gifts as well you know and and if you do struggle at different points that's okay I think I've probably struggled at a different point of my cycle throughout my life so it's just kind of sharing um these practices and and shall then we, also uh, with the we... mm. oh yeah I was just gonna say shall we share where we are but no to, to oh, say we'll the it, moon yeah we'll do a quick but... thing yeah about the moon cycle so yeah. um we've got a yeah for people now I actually didn't look it up because we I recorded this last time but we are in I think we just had the new moon we just had the new moon in Leo um on the 28th so the new moon if if you don't have a if you don't have a, a, a bleed um for whatever for whatever reason um then a really great great way to tap into uh charting with your cycles is to use the moon as like a little uh anchor i guess so the new moon uh, would be day one uh of your cycle so your inner winter so the moon's at its darkest and it's kind of like you know winter is really dark it's kind of that lower energy it's a great way to like remember it. it took me a long time to remember like which moon was which um so the new moon and we just had the new moon in leo on the 28th today it's the 31st so we'd be on um new moon yeah it was 28th 29th 30th 31 yeah so i think we'd be on day four of the moon um now but you can literally um look it up online as well but i'm just trying to give you a, a little anchor so new moon would be day one which is like in a winter um then you've got your waxing waxing moon which i always want to wax on wax off i always think of <laughs> karate <game. laughs> waxing moon is in, a, is in a spring um so it's kind of the, the energy levels are rising um full moon when it's all big and glowy is really like ovulation so in a summer so you can think of it like a big full yellow glowy it's like an egg yeah 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 exactly big egg yeah. in the sky <laughs> 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 lighting up the sky. Um, and then we have our inner uh, in autumn which is our waning moon and I think of that's like my energy is waning because it really does wane <laughs> um, so that's a good way to kind of remember it and we've got like an you know there's a there's crossover days there's um so another extra season that we'll be exploring but we'll go into that you know uh, in more detail but that's if you don't have a bleed and you need to like you know practice this kind of cycle awareness and, and working with um yeah a, a feminine flow of energy because we all have masculine and feminine energy so um yeah yeah and julia what were you gonna say oh i was just gonna say shall we uh, check in on where we both are in our cycles because mm. i always think that's nice yeah do you want to go first i do i think i'm on day seven i'm a bit discombobulated today i traveled yesterday so i'm a bit like where am i at i actually might be on day eight i'm just trying to think I did that camping this morning. Ah, uh, yeah. So I'm a bit like, oh, discombobulated. Yeah. So I was, I was, uh, I was away for a couple of weeks, just staying with my mum, and I travelled back yesterday. So I'm a bit like, where am I? What's going on? I think I'm on day, um, I'm on day eight of my cycle now. Um, so I'm kind of in that, kind of in 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 a spring, um, sort of fully, yeah, kind of fledged in in a in a springtime. So I think, uh. Probably, I, I would say today, a slightly discombobulated, but also excited, like a little, um, like a little excited, like chickity chick, just sort of, you know, <laughs> a bit tired because I had a late night and just lots of traveling yesterday. So normally I'd be like probably feeling a bit more energized, but also considering the amount of sleep I've had, I'm actually feeling very energized. So, <laughs> <laughs> really so wait, so are you in, in the spring? Are you in spring? Yeah, I, I feel like okay. I'm still in, in a spring. Yeah, yeah. Spring. Yeah, I would say so. Probably soon to be kind of, you know, crossing over to in the summer. But how about you, Julia? Where are you at? It must be in autumn, I think. Maybe. Yeah, no, I'm definitely in autumn now. Um, I am day... I You asked me the other day and I thought I was day 18. I was actually day 16. So I'm day okay. 20 now. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. So I don't I don't have super regular cycles just to note. So uh, other people may also um, not have them like so mine can can really vary between mm. sort of 25 to 30. And um, sometimes I even get, you know, it's like 22 I had recently, which was very short. Mm, um, yeah. So, yeah, so uh, so day 20 in autumn. 
but I will probably I will have at least another week of inner autumn mm -hmm. so this is going to be at least a 27 day cycle mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. um so yeah no I'm definitely feeling um lower energy like just ready to snuggle you know? mm. <laughs> I feel like we're both and it's also a Sunday as we're doing this so I feel like that's yeah. like we're a bit sleepy we're kind of like snuggly we're just like kind of keeping it a bit chill and just yeah but it's nice we, we also wanted to show up in different parts of our cycle um when, as we do yeah. this and we also wanted to you know real life gets in the way you know I had a, a, a long call last night the catch up with someone it was really nice and I could have gone to bed earlier but I was like I really just want to chat with this person and and I also had a day of traveling you know sort of on a six hour coach bit yesterday and you know real life kind of happens so it's it's also and that kind of I guess brings us to a big red rule which is again a, a um a red school thing but it's um you know the big red rule that Alexandra and Shane came up with was really your cycle is your cycle so it really kind of um I don't know kind of overview like uh, what's the word I'm trying to say it sort of like uh, transcends that's not the word but it it transcends anything that we you say so, yes 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 so it's kind of like yeah if you um you know and, and even to ourselves so you know there's no for me today there's no I should feel more energized because I'm in my inner spring I'm like no I'm in my inner spring I'm kind of I'm kind of awake but I'm a little bit scatty because I had a late night and that's life, you know, so it's really kind of seeing where we're at. And the big red rule is, you know, your experience is the kind of the bottom line of it. So whatever you whatever we're saying, if you're, if it's not really like your own experience, that's cool. Um, I think really mm -hmm. we should wanted to say junior as well, the big yes. red rule. So yeah. That's important. Yeah. Um, so yeah. winter. <laughs> winter. If I keep glancing here, it's just because I have notes. Um but um, yeah, reconnecting to that ancient wisdom of of inner winter, I think really. Um, I think what did that song? I had a song in my head, and it was um, because we are living in a because we are living in a linear world, and I am a cyclical girl. I think I had that a song in my head, you know, Madonna. <laughs> um, my own. <laughs> um, and yeah, really, really uh, slowing down because that's where our hormones are. You know, they're kind of everything is very low energy. Um in a world that doesn't really um, support or emphasize or um, encourage is the word I think, encourage kind of slowing down uh, for the most part, obviously um, in our, and probably in our experience. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. and when we can kind of slow down, we can reconnect back to ourselves, but also back to the cycle. And I think just mm. being held and connected um can can you yeah. talk about um because I remember we were talking about the the red tent and the sort of ancient wisdom and things like I find that really interesting because um I feel like there's no menstruation history that we learn you know but mm -hmm. obviously it's been happening to people who menstruate <laughs> forever time, yeah. um <laughs> so what can you talk like yeah can you just like tell us about what you were telling me like you know when you first have your period and you go and you sit with the wise women and that yeah what used so to happen. I think um yeah so I think kind of in more and I guess in in some cultures as well more in like um a more of a tribal time you you have um the red tent or it's also called like the moon lodge um and it would mm -hmm. be where the elders would take the um the the people that were bleeding for the first time so men are is, is the first bleed so they would take uh, the you know the the children or the younger ones um experiencing men arc and they would uh go to like the red tent and it's kind of just a space where yeah you can I mean there's people that still do this I think it would be really cool there, there's people that do have like yurts and things um all over uh, the world and they they have really? it so that you can have like a big what again what red school calls it the, the big bleed so you can kind of plan it out uh, and now, I don't have kids and stuff, but some people do. So trying to plan out like an actual deep breast when you're bleeding or, um, you know, or through, through work as well. Sometimes for me, it falls, you know, and it's I'm on a work day and I'm like, no, <laughs> you know, because I just can't quite disconnect as much as I'd like to. Um, so, yeah, so it's kind of this um, taking taking people away. Let me just write you now. Okay. Um, 
yeah so kind of going to these spaces and yeah the elders would kind of talk about um you know what was going to happen because there's changes happening in the body um and also you know and that would be the elders or the the crones and I feel like crones gets kind of a bad rep but really it's people that have been uh, through menopause and have that you know that white that wiseness um that is quite in incredible to experience and we kind of get a little a little tapped into that I think when we have our um when we have you know our, our bleeds and we're able to really deeply rest I think we get a little a little kind of uh feeling of that so it's um yeah so it's kind of this uh, and it's again it's like you know told through word of mouth I suppose you know that kind of being very tribal coming you know communicating so having the space to do that very kind of I guess quite a matriarchal um you know way of way of living and where you know there is an importance for for, for women and and that power you know you know we all, we all have power I'm not saying you know um men are bad you know but what I am saying is that we do live in a, a predominantly uh interesting society that is not really set up I think sometimes actually for anyone these days I feel like there's so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was talking with someone the other day and I was like but it's all just really patriarchal ah. and they were like yeah but actually and I was like oh actually you're, you're kind of you have a point like it's not really you know this capitalist thing that we have it's like all these structures set up I'm not saying everywhere I know that you know that I know a lot of people in the ADHD entrepreneurial community who are like weaving their own paths because they feel like they need to because they just it doesn't work in this structure right so it, it's uh so I just want to put, put that out there but it's yeah it's kind of having this word of mouth and again you know people that are keeping that alive with um you know red tent ceremonies cacao ceremonies just yeah, women's circles is something that I'm really excited to be you know holding soon and having that space oh, nice. like women's circles I mean um I think it's really important to you know I, I like to be inclusive with with my language so I feel like it's um you know I guess you could call it you know men menstruator circles or maybe moon circles because I also feel like there are people that w want to work with this and maybe don't have a have a um a bleed so it's uh yeah that word of mouth so it's that 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 community and that connection and that you know um village that tribe of passing this information across um and yeah kind of so people know that they're not alone and there are there is going to be some odd things going on and maybe mental health wise as well you know it's all it's all fun and games yeah. so it's is that kind of connection to it all and um it's quite incredible when we get to take some time to pause um I know for me I get really great downloads and visioning and mm. it's incredible it's just and I just what's, want to be able to rest more you know yeah what um what can you explain what a download is yeah so I feel like it's kind of um I love that, uh, again, I'm going to reference these ladies a lot because they're just incredible. <laughs> Shane and Alexandra, I remember yeah. uh, they yeah. spoke about it uh, recently and it was, um, what did, I can't remember who, which one of them called it, but they call it a uh, dictation from the divine. And I was like, ah, oh, mm. yes, that is, mm, that is what it is. And for me, it's <laughs> kind of like, if I really get to slow down um, and I get to even, and I know this is not going to be for everyone, either if you want to or if it's possible. So I am, you know, there is, we could go a, a whole other you know uh, episode on privilege of this as well but uh you know not even speaking I've had the odd days where I've been able to like I had a great like big bleed like a couple of uh, months ago with the Queen's Jubilee where I had it just fell on that long weekend and I was like yes <laughs> it's true. Like, I didn't even talk to anyone for like day two day two is like my favorite oh wow I'm very connected and I was just, uh, you know, journaling a lot. And it's, I kind of felt that like dictation from the divine. And I guess some people get it maybe when they're writing. Some people maybe call it channeling. Um, but it's just kind of something mm. that is kind of coming through you. And you're like, well, this isn't, this isn't me. It's not my ego that's doing this. It's just kind of like, oh, I'm just, I guess I'm just very open to receive. And I think receiving is the ultimate uh, feminine energy in action you know um, and, and as I say we all have masculine and feminine energy but to receive actually I think a lot of us find that incredibly difficult it's really I mean we were having a conversation before this uh, Julia and actually it just popped into my head about someone I was speaking to yesterday and I was like just it's a great practice to receive you know it's so yeah. tricky yeah. it's that I find yeah. it so challenging too and I know a lot of I know a lot of women do experience this and I'm sure a lot of people you know uh, do experience this so um, yeah, so kind of a download is almost like this 
I don't know, I guess it's kind of like, a, like a, sometimes it's visioning, a bit like a deja vu sometimes will almost be, you know, a, or a feeling. Um, I think things like clairvoyance and clairsentience and clair whatever else there is are, quite, are a lot stronger <laughs> because of everything that's going on in the brain um, around this time as well. It's just that connection. And so I would say like a download is kind of like, it's almost like an idea, but it's like an idea from source, God, universe, whatever you want to call it it's kind of like it's not an ego thing I think it's quite a pure mm. like oh that's what the next step is oh it's really clear that, now what why is it why does that happen in our when we're when we're menstruating in our in the winter I think you know it's what? to do with I think it's to do with the brain how the brain um changes a little bit I think it's to do with and I think it I think that I notice for me that happens and I do you know a lot of med- meditation and practices but I still find it hard to drop into that when I'm working because I'm not in I'm not so much in the being able to just really rest and receive and it takes a lot of practice especially if you're some people might find this really easy that's great that's probably a you know a real, and it is a strength for anyone it's a not a strength but it's a really nice quality of inner winter to receive and to rest um and I think Julia we were speaking last time and I had said something about um oh, what did I say about rest I think Oh, rest is radical. Yeah, the rest is a radical, yeah. and, and you know, and this deep, the kind of the deep pause, you know, like there we put yeah. down the bundle of something that we've deemed so important. Is it actually yeah. that important? Like, can it be yeah. left, you know, another hour? Can it be? Could it be left a whole other day? Could it be left a week? Dun dun dun. Yeah. You know, what can, <laughs> we, can we maybe, you know, have a play with that? Can we maybe push push the boundary in a different way of like, dare I leave this laundry till I'm in my inner spring and I really want to spring clean, you know, everything yeah. like in that zone, you know? Oh, that's great. And sometimes I do that. Sometimes I'm like, that's all right. That's an inner spring job, you know? It's a bit like when inner critic comes up and, and we'll talk about that more in uh, episode four with inner autumn, but that's a really inner autumn thing. And if inner critic is coming up and just, you know, bashing your, your, you, you for all these ideas or whatever, Mm -mm. you just say no no get back in the box I I need you in in inner autumn when we're going to edit and we're going to be like critical of this stuff perfect you know but now I don't need I don't need that in in the spring like these are like my ideas are like little tender shoots you know we're going to protect that so it's sort of having that uh, awareness and fortitude as well um so that we're not you know cock blocking ourselves really or just getting in our own you know it's doing a self-sabotage or whatever um so yeah, <laughs> yeah so I think when we get those downloads and we get those it's because we are we've primed ourselves for rest in some way and that, that might be you know your partner takes the kids out to the park for 30 minutes whilst there's a shepherd's pie in the oven and you can have a bath uninterrupted without a tiny child you know wanting to see mum you know or dad or whatever yeah. or whoever you know and you just get that pause you get that downtime um and that could be like a nice a nice download then um so it's just yeah. kind of yeah, building in little bits of, of rest and, and mm. receive. um and I think the brain is and I, I we I'd love to explore this more in the future because we, we spoke about the brain a bit in the in a spring episode yes. but we were just saying there's so much to explore but I think there's yeah there's the brain is slightly different um my friend Mo- my friend Kylie of Moon Forest Flow speaks about this and it's I think it's to do with the hemispheres of the brain are and I want to say more connected during menstruation than they normally are and we only tend to see this in brain scans of tribes um, I'm guessing because they don't have I don't know the internet <laughs> to hand to distract or you know they're living in a much more connected way to the land but um Carly speaks about this and I, I think that's really cool so I'd love to pick her brain on it a bit more and um and get some yeah. but I think it's yeah it's and, and again it's kind of carving that out um for ourselves in a society that doesn't really want us to pause it wants us to just go 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 all the time so mm, Mm. yeah and you were also talking about planning for rest Mm. so which mm. that was that was quite radical for me as well like to actually plan in your calendar oh right I'm gonna need rest on this day yeah yeah because I know it will be autumn or winter Mm. yeah Um, kind of I mark off um like the red days in my calendar so I kind of know roughly you know when I'm going to be bleeding and I think that's a great practice as is like writing in a red pen I think that's really helpful especially when you're skipping over stuff if you journal a lot for example um, or even if you just have I mean I have a journal book but I also have an ideas book for my business so I always will write in that if I'm on my bleed and I have a download uh, or an idea or whatever I'll write that in red pen because oftentimes those are my best 
clearer ideas because all of the stuff of like what I want to do or the ego that kind of melts away and it's like this is the core thing so when you're when you're in the next bit of your cycle come back to the core thing especially with ADHD guys like mm. we are scatterbrains <laughs> like we just are and that's a beautiful thing and it's fascinating and I love it but we also there you know there a day is finite you know there's a there's a, there's a chunk of time there and there is only so much one can do in a day and we, we can quite do lots of things but we might burn ourselves out so I would say yeah like planning in for rest and I think again we we probably spoke about that a little bit on the in the spring of like not only planning in um because we really you know planning is great for in the springtime but I think um planning in yes and slowing the roll ready for mm. um, in autumn and um and we'll probably touch on that again a bit more in in, in autumn but yeah planning for that planning for that rest um and it might also be you know it might be i don't know um perhaps you're like me and julia for example we're kind of on opposite kind of ends of our cycle at the moment if you like so if if i had like i don't know three young screaming very energetic children and i was um, and i'm you know in my in a spring right now and maybe julia has some some children or whatever i might say hey julia let me let me take you know all of the little monkeys <laughs> little cheeky monkeys and i'll take them all out for the day um you know so that you can do xyz so it might be that julia wants to like um you know use her in autumn time to like just cook and prep some meals and put them in the freezer she might want to like get the urge to like kind of hoover a house or something because we do get this urge <laughs> to kind of nest or it might be that I say you know when she's on maybe day one or two of her cycle I say hey Julia do you want me to just take um the kids on Friday night and we'll have a sleepover and they can stay here and it gives Julia that time to like have that have that deep rest so it, it's not always a, you know five days or however long your bleed is of like pure deep you know unadulterated rest you know but it's <laughs> finding that I think Shana and Alexandra call it the one percent rule it's like finding that and when, yeah. once you have that little bit you realize how much better and more nourished you feel throughout the rest of your cycle and then you want to keep doing it and you want to keep getting more and more and more so I think that's you know that knock-on effect um, of doing that and also I can say and Julie can say yeah I'll take your you know screaming children when you're on your bleed you know we can kind of and we can kind of swap and that is that kind of tribal uh red 10 in practice right philosophy i suppose you could say um and it might not be screaming children it might be like i don't know um well i said julia like a, a voice note the other the other day and i was super spacey because i was in my inner autumn and i was like what am i trying to say and i was just like i wanted to reply but i was so spacey because of uh you know pain of adhd and everything as well and um julia was like oh so you just want this this and this and i was like oh, it took me like three minutes in a voice note to say it so it's also just <laughs> helping you with a project and they're just clarifying it or you know there's it's great to kind of have people collaborating on different kind of cycle days as well um so I think that's really cool so yeah, yeah um, that kind of and that's and that's why again it's really important to talk about it because mm. otherwise you don't know what yeah. day the other people are on and yeah um, asking for permission I think, and also how they feel yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think you you had um a really good well, we had a kind of nice example actually of that holiday in Cornwall where we were I think we were in the kitchen and we were getting ready for a day out you know and I think Julia just said like I'm on day was it I think it was day two like, I'm on day two today and I was like oh babe I got you I got you cuz I got you don't worry about it have a seat chill out like, have a cup of tea you know because it was kind of we were getting ready for like I don't know where we were going because we went to so many places but we, you know, we were having a day out and and um I know that day two is like just kind of want to I mean it's enough to be around people I'm kind of like I'm a bit of a hermit <laughs> I'm like I don't really want to talk to anyone but you know so it's just kind of like having that awareness and also I guess for Julia to ask her partner as well and being able to kind of share that you know in, in your relationship mm. is fantastic because it means that we can really ask and again ask for what we want and practice receiving it because it's yeah. tough sometimes to do that um yeah yeah definitely. I think that's a nice a great yeah. a nice example of yeah real yeah. time you know and and I think I want to say this as well sort of that I felt confident enough to just announce that to the family yeah. because of you and oh. your work and the conversations that we have had been having and continue mm. to have and you know just and just talking and just you know reading more watching more mm. but like just being like encouraged to 
talk about like it's you know half the world's population experiences mm. this <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not norm- it's normalizing it's not it a rare yeah. thing no so to just be to just like feel comfortable to announce it to your family I was like yeah I do I feel that I mm. feel comfortable now like who cares like if yeah. they know they all have a partner or a daughter or yeah. a sister or a mother you know yeah. so but yeah it was really that was really nice actually yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just like hey people yeah. <laughs> you, don't you don't know what day two is just ask Sasha she'll fill you all in yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no it is it and I think it gives ourselves uh permission to kind of I think when you when you talk about it as well it gives other people permission to talk about it you know I I said it like last yeah. week I don't know someone one of the you know team leaders was like chasing me up for something and um and I was like oh mate sorry scramble brains you know hormones and ADHD is always a fun mix you know so and he was like oh you cracked me up and I was like yeah but you know I'm gonna make it normal because it is mm-hmm. tricky and we do have to we don't have to but many of us are in a situation where we are having to work on days when we'd really just love to have this deep rest you know and it's not we're not quite some places are some businesses are um I know mine will be once I you know am doing it full time um I will be exploring you know cycle syncing and how Mm. these rest breaks work in because I know how deeply nourishing it is um even if you're just getting a little bit so yeah so I think just ha- kind of having permission to talk about it and it being you know normal um and it, it you know and it affects our whole lives like it affects all the you know affects relationship it affects you know um it does maybe affect our you know work because I can say I'm probably going to be less productive on this day because of this or maybe I won't it's not you know again it's that big red rule but it's also like not imposing yeah. it on, on your month so mm-hmm. yeah I think it just gives us that um yeah that kind of permission not to make excuses but to just be aware that you know our energy yeah. does wax and wane like the wax moon. And wane like the moon exactly uh on that note shall we wrap up i think we should because we in a winter yeah i think the the last time we kind of had a few other bits but i think actually um yeah we can we could do some other bits we wanted to talk about um period poverty and things like that i think that would make a really nice um extra episode yeah, at some right. point because we we spoke yeah. about that a lot in our live that didn't say yeah. it's on instagram so if you want to see that yeah. one there's some other bits that we kind of talked on um but so i think we could yeah we could do another episode about that so yeah. um i think yeah just you know permission to say no permission to talk about it is huge um i don't know if you know, actually i might just very briefly is also just um uh companion goddesses oh yes we sort of touched on this in the spring one and um we we were thinking well julia's i said i like i love working with goddesses blah 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 and julia said oh like a companion goddess and i thought oh this is great and we kind of spoke about that you know a little bit more in um in episode two um so do have a listen to you know the next one that will be available after this it's slightly discombobulated but um we kind of talk about it then and and i would say that for, for for this phase would be this season would be either um some people I know a few people that are really into um exploration with with Hecate who's a goddess uh, I don't know loads and loads about Hecate um and then there's also Lilith um and I just love this and I think they they could be they're quite like um um I don't want to say like they're not like scary but they're like you know you want to learn about them before you kind of dive in and, and work with them um so I think I won't go into loads of, of info I mean I I find Lilith pops up in my life through like I don't know if I'm picking a card sometimes or just stuff will just come through I don't just just you know serendip- serendipitously is that a word it is now um and so and she's kind of like yeah the sort of you know, the mother of demons and um goddess of night and death and and kind of rebirth and there's lots in there so I think if you if you want to listen to the episode two where I speak about Persephone a little bit um and and that kind of goddess in a spring that's really cool but we'll be exploring that a lot more in um in my upcoming guide which is seasons and cycles and I'll be touching on the goddesses then um and and kind of exploring them as yeah like companion goddesses for the cycle um so I think I'm going to just say that because there's just so much you know detail that we could drop into um for another time so yeah I think um I think that's about everything really I think if you want to um find me on Instagram it's uh Sorcha 
S O R C H A underscore Rattigan R A double T I G A N underscore. Um, and you can you know add me on there. Um, get on the mailing list. Wherever you're seeing this, there will be a mailing list somewhere. Um, and I also have a really, I've got two fantastic slides now. I've got one called Ready Steady Charts. If you're new to this and you want to start charting and you want to use the moon, if you don't have a, you know, if you don't menstruate, if you don't have a bleed, um, more than welcome to, you know, grab that. It's it's free and it's it's really it's a great little um, guide. And I also have another guide that I've just finished, which is called, um, I've just finished, I'm trying to remember the name. I think it's uh, My Survival Guide, ADHD, PMDD and me. Um, and that's really looking at ADHD and PMDD. And there's some really cool stuff in there. Um, so, yeah, grab grab a copy of those. There's some more stuff coming. I'm really excited. Um, yeah, I wanted to say, yeah, massive thank you to Julia for joining me. Um, and, um, yeah, I did, is there anything else you want to add, Julia? No, no, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks yeah. for the lovely chat, as always. Wow. And I feel like, I feel like, We've got sort of like a little catchphrase emerging for each season. Ooh. So I feel like um, winter is, oh, is I it had it. Is it the it. radical rest or the cosmic pause? Is what I've rest been is radical. Yeah, maybe it's rest is radical. I think I said about the cosmic pause, didn't I? Oh, when the cosmic pause, yeah. yeah. So rest is radical. We'll maybe have like a, like a tagline, but yeah, rest is radical. Or the cosmic pool. Rest is radical. Rest is like radical. something to just leave, mm. leave you all. Yeah. Um, rest little, is radical. Little there summary. I like that. Yeah, a little yeah. tagline. Mm. <laughs> right then, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to stop the recording. And um, we look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.